Hello, uh, pleasure to be on the World Comedy Tour uh, with so many different uh, accents and languages. I, love, I, was in, um, I was in Paris last year. Oh, yeah. I was in France. I took the train from London. It was that go one that goes under the, the Channel Tunnel and then arrives in France. And as we arrived in France, this mobile phone went off. And I just heard this woman answer and just go, Hello? He goes, Hello, Susan. Yes, we've just arrived in France. It was gorgeous, beautiful. My was really available. <laughs> yes, if you could tell Nigel back at the office to send the pack through by seven, that'd be splendid. Okay, ciao. Oh. Uh, Actually, she, she probably didn't hang up. <laughs> Ciao. Oh, beep, oh. It occurred to me that half the people on that train don't speak English as a first language. Half the people on that train were hearing a totally foreign language. For the first time in my life, I wondered what it must sound like to hear English spoken when you don't speak it. Because I can't speak French. If I was trying to speak French, I'd just make French noises. There'd be a French person talking on the train, I'd be looking and going, oh, the phone went off and this woman went, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that last bit was. <laughs> I really hope French people do that. I'd love to think there are French people on that train who went home to their families and went, Ah, I was on the train today, this mobile phone went off. Uh, all I heard was this English woman saying, Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 Actually, what I do is one step more ignorant than that. When I try and impersonate French, I make French noises and then drop in an occasional French word that has nothing to do with the conversation. Like if someone had approached me on the street today and asked me for directions in French, I had no idea what they were saying. But I'd be telling you, going, oh, this guy came up to me today and went, Qu'est-ce que maman zama ma croissante? Qu'est-ce que maman zama je ne sais quoi ménager toi? Qu'est-ce que maman François Mitterrand? Again, I really hope French people do that. I'd love to think there's a guy in Paris right now who was approached by an American on the street today. He's came up to me and said, Excuse us, can you tell me how to get to Ar Eiffel Tower? Because we don't know where we are and we're a little bit lost right now. We've been here for an hour. And he's at home with his family. He's like, I was on the street today. This American man came up to me. He said, Bow down, can I have a burger? Bow down, can I have fries? Bow down, can I have And you know what? I've realised where I get this habit from, of making noises of a language and then dropping in an occasional word I understand. The Swedish chef from The Muppet Show. <laughs> At which point I have to stop because most people turn to the person next to them and do their own Swedish chef impersonation, which only has in it the words hurdy-gurdy. <laughs> hurdy-gurdy, hurdy-gurdy. I thought that's how Swedish people spoke. I was shattered the first time I saw the Olympics when I learnt that the Swedish national anthem doesn't go Ye borskern den hörn bitte he Ye borskern hörn bin den hörn bork 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 It must have been the weirdest show to watch on television in Sweden because they actually had the Muppet Show in Sweden but in English with Swedish subtitles and they speak English, they would have understood every word I was watching there as Kermit the Frog pops up Welcome to the Muppet Show and now it's time for the Swedish Chef and they would have been oh, Hans, Lars, come quickly <laughs> The funny man will be speaking Swedish <laughs> What the hurdy-gurdy is he saying? <laughs> I don't know what an Aussie chef would have sounded like on a European version of The Muppet Show. Just some guy going, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 sausages. <laughs> <laughs> you know the irony is, we were this close to speaking French in Australia. We were this close to being colonised by the French. Like, even to a matter of days, apparently. In fact, I think the French even arrived in Botany Bay before Captain Cook. Because they looked around and just went, I do not like this place, it is a bit shit. A bit shit. Whereas Captain Cook went, well, it is a bit shit, but I think if we go around the corner, it might be nice. <laughs> Although I've recently found out Captain Cook actually came from Yorkshire, so he wouldn't have sounded like that at all. <laughs> he would have been on deck going, this place is fucking shite. <laughs> I'd love to think that nothing would have changed if we'd been colonised by the French. The only difference is we'd be butchering French the way we butcher English. We'd be speaking some weird French-Australian amalgam... Frozzy. We'd be speaking Frozzy. <laughs> Imagine the last minutes of the Rugby World Cup as Johnny Wilkinson potted that majestic field goal just to hear 40,000 Aussies in the stands in unison go, Oh, say impossible! <laughs> Uh, you've been absolutely brilliant to talk to. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you later, guys.